Hello, good day. In today's lecture, we are going to talk about comparative static analysis. What is comparative static analysis? The comparative static analysis is the comparison between two static points. These two static points are the two equilibria that we achieved through the market demand and supply equilibrium. Now, the law of demand, as you remember, and the law of supply as well, they all assume that determinants of the demand and supply other than price are constant. In turn, we assume them they are exogenous. Exogenous means they are actually taken as given. Like simple example, when you just define the law of demand, you take income, passion, taste, weather, everything is given. You only change the price and you see how the price change affects the quantity demand. Keeping all these assumptions in mind, when you basically define the, or you just, just look at the interplay between the demand and supply, you get an equilibrium point. But this equilibrium point does not last forever. This equilibrium point has to move. But what happens? Like, you know, when to the market equilibrium, when some of these exogenous variables change. Change in the exogenous variable has got impact either on the demand side of the market or the supply side of the market. We need to see, the first of all, that which side is being affected by the exogenous, the change in the exogenous variable. The change in demand or supply shifts the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity in a market. Comparative static analysis is a comparison of the market equilibrium before and after change in the exogenous variables. What are the steps involving the comparative static analysis? A comparative static exercise consists of a sequence of five steps. As the first step, we begin the analysis assuming that the market is in equilibrium. Like say, for example, they are actually meeting, they are at the point where the demand is equal to supply and the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity prevailing in the market. In the next step, we see that if there is a shift in the market supply or market demand curve, and then we see like, you know, that whether this change comes in the form of increase or decrease of the demand or supply curve. When these all things change, we actually find or reach to the new equilibrium point. All these adjustments bring us to the new equilibrium point. And when you actually have a new equilibrium point, what you do basically in comparative static analysis, you compare the old equilibrium point with the new equilibrium point. These comparisons tell you that whether the market is achieving the new equilibrium at higher price and higher quantity, or lower price and lower quantity, or higher price and lower quantity, or lower price and higher quantity. See, for example, how do the equilibrium price change when a determinant of supply or demand change? We can assume an example, like say, for example, look at the event. The Wall Street Journal reports that the price of PC components are expo expected to fall by 5 to 8% over the next six months. Now, there is a news that the PC components, the components that are used by the PC manufacturers, actually is going to go down by 5 to 8%. Now, what will be the different conditions and how your comparative static analysis change? keeping the two scenarios in your mind. Like say, for example, if you are managing a small manufacturing firm that manufactures PCs. And similarly, you may also be a manager at the firm that basically is managing or that is producing the softwares for the computers that basically are available in the market. Now we do this comparative static analysis to see the big picture, what happens in a big picture. Comparative static analysis shows that how the equilibrium price and quantity will change when the determinant of the supply and demand change, as you remember. Now, the first one, the first step here is like, say, for example, if you are looking at this change, like, you know, what actually is happening, that the cost of production is going down. The cost of production means the production price of the PC components actually is going down. So it means that, like, you know, the PC manufacturer is going to get the components at the lower price. Now, what you have to do is in the first step, you have to look what exactly is happening, where the equilibrium is going to establish and where you are going to have a new equilibrium and then you organize your plans. Like say, for example, what happens when the, when the supply, when the basically the price of components falls. Now the price of component is a price of cost of production for a firm that manufactures PCs. As you remember, as a determinant of the supply curve, when the cost of production falls, the supply increases. This cost of production is a factor that we keep constant when we define the supply and price relationship. And whenever this cost of production changes, you can actually supply more. Uh, if the cost of production falls, you can supply more at the same price. And similarly, if the cost of production rises, you can supply the same quantity at a higher price. 
at the same price. I'm sorry, it's a lower quantity at the same price. So now what happens is like, say for example, if the supply curve shifts, now your equilibrium changes from the point E to E dash. Now this change for a PC manufacturer is causing the prices to go down and equilibrium quantity to go up because the cost of production is going down. And this decrease in the cost of production is helping producers to produce more because they are increasing supply, their profit margins increase. Now, assume that you are a firm that is manufacturing or making softwares. Now, what happens with your demand for the softwares? Like say, for example, when the people buy more computers, they need more softwares. Say, for example, if you are running a computer on, on Windows, if you buy a computer, you need window. The two people, more more than two people, and so many people, if so many people demand computers, they will be requiring as many computer softwares, like say, for example, the Windows and other operating systems and uh, some other kind of operational softwares. Now, look at that, like how this will affect your demand and supply uh, equilibrium in the, in the market. Use this analysis, that scenario one, to deduce that lower component price will lead to a lower equilibrium price for computers. As you know that the price of computer has fallen, the decrease in the price of computer has increased the quantity demand for the computers. It means that a great number of softwares are being demanded, all right? So how will these changes affect the big picture in the software market? Now look at that. For you, the effect is coming on the demand. The similar change, basically the change that is actually changing your demand was changing the supply for a PC manufacturers, but you being a software maker, your demand will increase and keeping the supply the same, like, you know, if the demand actually shifts upward or the rightwards, which because the supply is increased, demand is increasing because the people are buying more softwares. They are, why they are buying more softwares? Because they are buying more computers. So whenever this demand actually increases, the price moves upward. Now the new equilibrium point is the point above the old equilibrium point. So you basically have got the new equilibrium point at the, the cross section of the supply curve, the old supply curve, and the new curve D dash. In this way, generally we come up with a with a kind of a decision, with a kind of a conclusion that how some developments affect the market. Like say, for example, when any economy is hit by the floods, the new equilibrium generally actually set up at the lower quantity at the higher price because that actually this flood and these kind of a situations reduce the supply. Like say, for example, in Pakistan recently we have had floods. These floods have reduced the cost of, like, you know, that have reduced the supply of so many vegetables and so many, uh, so many other kind of the crops, due to which the prices actually in the markets have risen. Now, say for example, if the onions were being sold at rupees ten or thirty rupees per kg earlier on before the floods, now they are being sold at two hundred rupees per kg. Now, this two hundred rupees, the price and the new quantity is basically the new equilibrium point. Thank you for joining us.